Two days ago, I released a video on TMDL where I talked about how the new TMDL editor was going to change my Power BI workflow. A couple of you commented and asked for examples on how to use the new feature, and in today's video, I want to give you two examples, one of which is using it to an analyze an existing model, the other of which is using it to create a completely new model. And I want, they're simple examples. Um, but I want you to see just how powerful this new feature is. So let's jump in. Okay, so first, TMDL is a definition language, which means it's used to define the objects that make up a tabular analysis services model, which is one of the technologies that kind of sits below the surface in Microsoft Power BI. Now, that means that you can technically use it to define anything that exists in the semantic model and what's exists in the semantic model is right here, right? So all of these objects here, but the new TMDL editor in Power BI maybe can't quite edit all of those. And right here, they have a description that says not all modeling changes are supported. Please see the list of documentation of the list of permitted changes. And you can click here and you can see which changes are permitted using this new feature. Now, to get started using it, all you need to do is you just need to drag an object from the semantic model into the code window, and it'll show you the code that Power BI wrote. Now, you can do this with most items in the semantic model. So, for example, I could do it with uh, tables, right? In here, I just dragged over my calculation group. You can do it uh, with measures, right? You can do it with relationships. You could do it with cultures. But... Uh, you might run into some items that don't quite work with this drag and drop feature. And just a reminder, this is a preview feature. <laughs> so don't expect everything to be perfect. Now, when you drag and drop over the TMDL, you'll see the TMDL that Power BI wrote. One quick note, the same way machine written SQL is slightly different and, and has more detail than human written SQL, would have. TMDL is kind of the same way. You know, there's a ton of things that the Power BI does and settings that Power BI sets when you build something using the system that a human might not necessarily think to set. So for example, like a lineage tag, a human's probably not generating a GUID like that. Um, and that's not to say that they aren't important and you shouldn't have them. But it's just to say that you're going to see a difference between Power BI generated TMDL and human generated TMDL. The other thing that I want to draw your attention to here is the spacing. So TMDL is kind of like Python if you've ever written it. It requires spacing, right? So the tab is what insets, right? So this create or replace command is them saying you're creating or replacing the model. And then here's all of the model settings. And then within the model, you're creating a table. And then here's all the things within the table, so on and so forth. So it's very dependent on spacing. The other thing is that it, ass it assumes, in particular with measures, right, that they all are on the same line. Um, and because it is so dependent on the white space, if you're going to have a measure that's going to span multiple lines, you need to put either the three back ticks or the double quotes to essentially let Power BI, Power BI or TMDL know, hey, this is going to be more than one line and essentially the next preceding lines are all going to be that measure or that definition. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about my first immediate most obvious use case. And that's if you have a metrics table using TMDL, you can view and edit all of your measures in one single screen. I think we've all been there where you're like in measure world and you're clicking from measure to measure to measure and you can't see them all in one screen. TMDL, I just dragged over my measures table. I can now see all of the measures in this report in one single view. And that's fantastic. The second example that I want to give you is when you're setting up a new report. So here I am opening Power BI and I've got a completely blank report. Right. There's all these things that are best practice to set up in a new file. So, for example, it's best practice to have a table with all your measures in it. It's best practice to have a table with all your UI measures in it. It's best practice to have, you know, structure and 
all these things with Power BI. With TMDL, you can automate some of that just right off the bat. So here is a TMDL script that I wrote, right? And if you notice, I wrote it, which means it doesn't have a lot of the machine code. Um, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, create or replace this model and create two tables, create a KPIs table and then create a UI uh, measures table, basically partition it with an empty table. So it just becomes measures and then create two placeholder measures, right? So I've got a placeholder measure and a placeholder measure. And when I run this, right, there I go. It's just said changes applied. I click apply changes, refresh now. And what do you know when I now go over into my data section, just like that, I have my KPI and my measure table completely set up. I didn't have to go fiddle in Power Query at all. That took all of what, like two seconds? That is where we're gonna start to see some real time savings. Now what's even more cool, is so here's the TMDL code that I executed, but if I now drag this semantic model back over, you can see what Power BI actually created. And look, it Power BI automatically created the lineage tags for me, which is really cool. It automatically set some data access settings and options, and it automatically added some annotations. So here you see this this kind of this really cool feature of TMDL, and in particular the TMDL editor, where I'm giving it some uh, honestly a pretty beginner TMDL script. It's taking it and it's implementing it into its own semantic model and it's saving me time. So hopefully this has gotten you excited about TMDL and its future in Power BI. I expect as the community gets more engaged with it, we're gonna start to see some just brilliant use cases. Um, you know, I, I think the community of Power BI is, is really cool and that you have some absolutely incredibly intelligent people working in it. And as those people get more and more familiar with TMDL and use it in their day to day life, you're going to just see some, some really cool stuff. And, and this is a really important step in bridging the gap between the Power BI tool that you, anyone can pick up and actual like hardcore data developers. And I, I just, I, I think it's probably one of the most important features that Power BI has released in the time that I've been using it. Um, with that said, if you're interested in business intelligence, uh, SQL, that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe I'll make another video on this. Thanks for watching.